bogus pretenders. And uh, as you know, um, Srila Narayan Maharaj recently published his Hindi Bhagavad Gita, and that Hindi Bhagavad Gita is um, from the uh, original that I believe came from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur's Bhagavad Gita, which he published with uh, Srila Viswanath Chakrabarti Thakur's commentaries and some of his own translations. And now he, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is again manifested in Srila Gurudev, who's presenting the Bhagavad Gita first for the uh, Hindi-speaking world, and now it will be for the Western world. And he also is very famous for um, discovering the uh, appearance place of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After, well, while he was working for the government, he wanted to move to Navadweep, but they wouldn't give him a transfer there. So he resigned, and they refused to accept his resignation, and they kept him in the service and transferred him. And then he lived uh, just about 25 miles, I think, from um, Navadri. And uh, then later he lived in Godrumdri, and he became more and more serious about discovering Lord Chaitanya's birthplace for the benefit of the world. So he began to make inquiries because he was finding that the place where he was, Navadri, was just a hundred years old, so it wasn't, couldn't have been the real Navadri. So he did inquiry to see where the real place of Lord Chaitanya's birth was, and some people told him that, well, now it's lost under the Ganges because of the change of the flow of the Ganges, but he wasn't satisfied with that. So from his own, um, uh, his own place, his own abode, in Gojumadri, he saw, after doing inquiries, and finding out about one place on the Mayapur side, um, and, certain, and very carefully studying ancient maps and speaking to advanced devotees there, they found that there was some piece of land where only Tulsis could grow and nothing else could grow, and this was now under the ownership of Muslims. And he was becoming more and more convinced that this was the right place. And then from his abode he saw an effulgent light coming from across the river. And then he had a vision that Lord Chaitanya and his Sankirtan party was actually also there in the effulgence. So he um, brought, later on he brought um, Srila Jagannath Das Bhavati Maharaj, his Guru Maharaj, to the spot in a basket. He was so um, old and he couldn't even see. His eyelids were drooping over his eyes and he couldn't open them. But when he arrived at the place, he jumped way up in the air, even though previously he couldn't even walk. And this confirmed that it was the right place. And later on, Srila Bhakti Thakur himself went door to door to establish a temple there at the Yoga Peak. I think the Gaur Vishnu Priya Temple. And um, there was one newspaper called Amrita Bazar Patrika, which uh, put out an article that now Kedarnath, Baba Kedarnath Dada, might be coming to your door, trying to collect one or two rupees from each person for this temple. So any sincere gentleman should give him something. And that way, practically single-handedly, he um, collected the money for the temple and established the temple. And, of course, we know he wrote so many wonderful books like Kalyana Kolpachu, um, with the Sharanagati prayers and um, Gitavali prayers which gives the same siddhantas as the scriptures, but in simple Bengali language, and in the first person, the I mode, so that the reader, us, we conditioned souls, can relate to our own fallen position, understand uh, our present condition, and at the same time, understand how to become free from it by praying in ways that he expresses on our behalf. So I don't want to take up more time because I'm sure other devotees would like to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Now in Krishna Pramachari we will speak
वैष्णवन गुणा फाइल गुरुदेव दे कैन सर्व कृष्ण एंड प्रहलाद महाराज एक्सप्लेन सेम थिंग दैट गुरु शुश्रूषया भक्ता सर्वलाभर पनीन च संगी न साधु भक्ता नाम ईश्वर आराधनी न च वी हैव टू रिस्पेक्ट वैष्णव अंडर गाइडेंस ऑफ वैष्णव वी हैव टू एक्सेप्ट आवर गुणा फाइल गुरुदेव and we have to offer everything our heart and soul would have like explain that i want only your heart that means we have to offer everything and we have to do everything for his pleasure if we do everything for pleasure of guru uh, godapet gurudev then we can do everything for pleasure of krishna sri krishna chandra and so what you have to explain at last who is gauriya sadhak that means who came in line of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu after his perfection is so divided into two by one he will serve sri chaitanya mahaprabhu in navadvip dham by another he will serve vajanandan samsundar in braj this main teachings in dasmul shiksha that means 10 10 fundamental instructions All instruction Bhakti Thakur put in one slok. Amna daha tattam hari mya paramam sarva shakti mera sabdhin tad bhinnang sanskta jivan prakriti ka valitan tad vivid vilupta sanskta bhava bheda bheda prakasam sakalopi sadhanam sudha bhakti sadham tad pratyam putra sadhi janango vrachan rasayan sa one praman nine prameya. Amnaya means that which we which we get from Guru Parampara. There is so many things in Vedas and Upanishad. None can go easily. In, none can enter in Vedas through very easily. So we have to go through Guru Parampara. Which Guru Param? Which advice adopted by our Guru Parampara? we have respect them it is called amnayo what am i told that what am i proof there are nine things it proves what tattam hari mya paramam krishna is supreme theory hari is supreme theory who is this hari shrimad bhagavat the chakrasa thakur chal shrimad bhagavatam pramanam amalam sai bhagavatam एते कृष्णस्तु भगवान स्वयं सुप्रीम पास स्वयं भगवान इस हरी हरी ही परम दत्तम एंड सर्वशक्ति रसाधिम इज ओमनिपटेंट एंड रसाधिम ओसन ऑफ रस कृष्ण इज ओसन ऑफ रस आई होप दैट अलिवर्टी Know all these things that Krishna has sent for us, because you can see that one very little book Krishna has sent for us in English are book chapter compiled by the Guru Dev and is translated into French language also. So now let me explain this point. Rasabdin that there is five prominent ras and seven secondary ras. Santa, Dasa, Hasa. Santa Dasa Sakha Vatsala Madhur, these five are prominent, and Hasa, Karun, Rodra, Bhayanath, Bhi, Vibhatsa. These seven are secondary ras. Krishna is person of all ras. Srimad Bhagavatam explains it one in one slok, Malla Nama Sanirinam Narvaras Nirinam Smaru Murtiman, in this slok. So, Hari Param Tattam Sarva Sakti Masabdi, तद भिन्न जीव इज पॉट एंड पार्टिकल दिस जीव इज टू टाइप्स वन इज लिवर्टेड सोल अनदर इज कंडीशन सोल एंड दे आर साइमुलटेनियसली डिफरेंट एंड नॉन डिफरेंट फ्रॉम गॉड दैट भेदार प्रकाशम मींस नॉट ओनली फॉर जीव दैट मींस पोटेंसी एंड Shaktiman, the Almighty, they are simultaneously different and non-different. Sakalvati Sadhanam, Hare Shuddha Bhakti. What is Sadhan? Sadhan means 
by which means we can attain service of Krishna, it is called Suddha Bhakti. That means pure devotion. Prabhupada Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur explained it in Sri Chaitanya Chaitanya commentary. Suddha Bhakti means pure devotee means, pure devotion means spontaneous devotion. So, Sadhanam Suddha Bhakti has two types of devotion, regulative devotion and continuous devotion, spontaneous devotion. Krishna may be pleased by regulative devotion, but none can control Krishna by regulative devotion. So, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarati Rasam Thakur explained that pure devotion means Raganuga Bhakti. Sadhanam Suddha Bhakti and Sadha, what is the destination? Tat Priti Vekattu Bodhisati. Tat Priti. Tat means in this world there is three things, two things. One is called Tat Padartha and Tan Padartha. Srila Guru explained day before yesterday. Tat means Krishna. That means the preserve of Krishna is our supreme goal. Tat Priti. Then Srila Guru explained so many things about his pleasure, Krishna's pleasure. It must be pleased Krishna and it will be very testable for Krishna. Like us, we have given an example that Mother Jasoda, twisting Krishna's ears, Krishna wants to take her breast, take her breast, but Mother Jasoda shall sit down here. By one hand, he takes Krishna and by force he put back to Krishna on the floor. Krishna began to eat. Began being supreme personality Godhead, he could not do anything because due to love of Mother Jasoda. Krishna is weeping here. In another hand, Chanu and Musti, Krishna wrestling with them, and Krishna is very happy and testing heroism. Why this not pure devotion? Why not all activity of Mother Jasoda or welfare of Krishna? Krishna is weeping here, because, but Jasoda's inner mood is to please Krishna. How Krishna will be very good boy in future? Jasoda is ever well of Krishna. But Chanur Mustik, they fight in with Krishna, but the inner mood, how to smash Krishna? So it is not bhakti. So, sad priti, here in during wrestling with Chanur and Mustik, Krishna became very happy and testing heroism. Here it is not bhakti. Another hand, the Jasoda make weeping weep to Krishna, yet it is Uttama Bhakti. The Satham Tat Pritim, a person is Janan Gauratan Jasensa. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught all this theory for whole world. Sri Bhakti Vila Thakur merciful, mercifully taken all these things and make a garland in one slope. This is the best contribution of Sri Bhakti Vila Thakur. And another thing, the contribution of Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he discovered Snavadip Dham. And another, he discovered Prabhupada Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Goswami Thakur. If Bhakti Vinod Thakur not come in that time, none can know that where is Snavadip Dham? What is the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Try the help of Taking the help of Sri Jagannatha Swami Maharaj and taking map, old map from London National Library, and he proves that this is the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he discovered and, up and present the whole world Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Chakur. Today you are seeing that a very big preaching is going on. Who is the origin of this preaching theory? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarati Thakur. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur present Srila Bhakti Prabhupada in this world. And he preached Nam Hatcha. The people can assemble somewhere time to time and they can discuss so many things. 
about devotee, devotion and girls. So Bhakti Uthakur taught all these things for devotee. So he has so many things and he composed so many things in his literature. In Chaitanya Chaitamritam, in his commentary, Amrit Prabhava Bhasa, he told so many things. Sri Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya Chaitamrit Grantha is so deep without commentary of Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur or Sri commentary of Sri Prabhupada, none can enter in Chaitanya Chaitamritam. Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur had done so many things, just like our six Goswamis. Sila Rupa Goswami, Sila Sanatana Goswami, Sila Raghunathas Goswami, Sila Jeeva Goswami, Sila Gopalar Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Sila Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. He did same thing. So all Gauriya Vaishnav, he will charge up that Saptam Goswami, that means seventh Goswami. As we walk that sixth Goswami, no one gets this title, that seventh Goswami. And after that, up to date, no one is eighth Goswami. Gaudiya was not giving the title. So, another activity and teaching of Srila Bhaktivinoda Chakur, we shall hear from another verse now. And everybody is want to hear us <coughs> about Bhaktivinoda Chakur and Galadhar Pandit from Srila Lotus Face of Srila Guru Dev. And that thing, that Srila Bhaktivinoda Chakur called Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine. Gaura Sakti Sarupaya Rupanuga Varayate. How many things? Simultaneously, his eternal survivors, eternal associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and same time, eternal associates of Divine Kapu. Namo Bhakti Vinodaya, who gives pleasure to Divine Kapu by devotion, so he is Bhakti Vinod. Satchidananda Namine, and he is. Like transcendental, Gaura Sakti Sarupaya, he is, who is Gaura Sakti, who is Potency of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Galadhar Pandit. He is manifestation of Galadhar Pandit. So Gaura Sakti Sarupaya, Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine, Gaura Sakti Sarupaya, Rupanuga Varayate. Rupanuga Varayate means, Varaya means sister, he is best among Rupanuga Vaishnav at this time. Rupanuga means the eternal associates of Krishna, it is they call Ragadmik. Iste Sarasiki Raga Paramah Vishtata Bhave Tanmaija Bhave Dhakti Sattva Ragadmik Odita. With eternal associates, they have eternally affection for Krishna, they call Ragadmik. And <coughs> who hearing activity of ragatmic jans who have agreed to adopt these things that friends are playing with Krishna, they are serving with Krishna, Madhav Jasoda and Nanda Baba, Upananda Vinanda, they are serving Krishna, Gopisa serving Krishna. If anybody has agreed, hearing all these pastimes and want to serve some same mood, they are, follow, they are following how to present Proceed this theory, they call Raga Nuga. That Ragatmika Manusrita Jasa Raga Nuga Chate, who is following Ragatmik Jan, they call Raga Nuga. And Bhakti Uthakur is called Rupa Nuga Varayate. Among our six Goswamis, Rupa Sami is best. So Rupa Sami, he act in two forms. One is Sadha form, another is Siddha form. Seva Sadha ka rupena, Siddha rupena chattrahi, tam hava lipsuna ka raja praja loka nusarata. He is performing all devotional activities as a Rupa Sami and is serving divine kapul as a Rupa Manjari. So, who follow Rupa Sami in externally and internally? Both. They are called Rupa Nuga. They are following Rupa Sami's all theory. 
मैं साधक सरी जाने में दर मैं सिद्ध सरी सेमाग अपडेम सिलो भक्ति डॉक्टर ठाकुर इज बेस इन इस टाइम सो रूपानुगो बरायते सो एक्पा सागात्मिक आपका देख तू फलों सागात्मिक देर रूपानुगो एमांग रूपानुगो हु इज फलोवर सब सिलो रूपोसमी इंटरनली एंड एक्सटर्नली दे आर कॉल रूपानुगो all all rupa nuga laga nuga but all laga nuga is not rupa nuga so after that silo guru dev asking me to stop here everybody is facing towards to the lotus space so i don't want to take much time all of you hare krishna bansha kalpata rupa chatipa sindhu bhai bhaja pancharan bhavane ko hare krishna चक्षुरून मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम पंचाकुश कृपा सिंधु पतिता and especially at the lotus feet of shilapakti no thakur and pray so that i can offer pushpanjali at his lotus feet to purify my own self although i am fully incompetent to speak shri gurudev has mercifully ordered me so i'll try to carry out the orders of shri gurudev shilapakti no thakur is among the most prominent acharyas of our gauri vaishnava sampradaya we know that when he appeared at that time gauri vaishnava sampradaya went through a very dark period after the disappearance of shila vishnu chakri thakur who was also at this time the most important acharya and who very nicely exposed the teachings of shri rupa goswami which were actually misunderstood by so many people but again due to the course of time as krishna says that this divine knowledge though it is eternal but it gets covered it never finishes but gets covered so shila bhakti or thakur i think about uh, a difference of 100 years or 150 years after shila vishnu chakri thakur he appeared at that time the people in the society who belong to good um positions educated people they were actually hating to come near those who call themselves as gauri vaishnavas why we heard from shamrani didi also that how they were actually on the name of being the devotees of mahaprabhu they were simply engaged in sense gratification and so many about and about enable activities that people would hate so actually people were really uh feeling very bad about the teachings of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so shri bhakti no thakur when he saw all those things he felt very he felt a lot of pain in his heart and he took the responsibility to again bring about the teachings of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in such a way to all the people so that they should understand that actually that there is nothing beyond than the teachings of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu his teachings are so pure and they are full of love and that's what everyone is looking for so very nicely he one after another he started painting and publishing the teachings of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu which were uh, given the form of books by shri goswami and other acharyas like chaitanya chitamrita patya samit sindhu and other literatures and he himself also compiled very new books based on the same philosophy but presented in such a way so that people at that time 
could understood, could understand. And Navin Prabhuji very nicely explained about Jaya Dharma. There's so many other books, teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and other things. So in those books, he presented the philosophy in such a sweet and uh, comprehensive language that when people they read these books, they started understanding that actually this philosophy is the best and there's no other uh, thing which could be taken as an alternative and it's actually the fault of these people who are not able to understand and they are uh, spoiling the image. And not only this, his own life, he practiced those teachings. It wasn't just coming to tell people but he followed those teachings. As we know, he is eternal associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So these things are present in him, but still he acted as a conditioned soul. In whole of his life, he followed the four ashrams very nicely, giving examples that how being in this world, we can still carry out our material duties and we can achieve our spiritual goals. And he discovered the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and thus we know him as the Saptam Goswami or the seventh Goswami in our line. The many nice stories how he uh, preached the Namhatta program in Urissa, Bengal and all those areas and started inspiring people to come together as we are doing now that they can come together and discuss the teachings of Mahaprabhu and thus can benefit their lives and Though it's Kali Yuga and we're all suffering with so many miseries and troubles and always the mind is in tension, but by following these teachings of Mahaprabhu, we can keep ourselves always peaceful and happy. And thus, not only this, we can also achieve the highest goal a living entity can achieve and that is love of Godhead. There's nothing beyond that. We also know once Srila Bhakti Thakur was taken to heaven and that was in regard to when all the demigods in the heaven they were discussing on the verse of Bhagavad Gita Apiche Chodura Charu Bhajate Mamana Nivar Sadhu Reem Samantapya Samyak Vepasito Hisa So they could not understand that how Krishna is saying that even if you see faults in my devotee do not criticize him because by the date of your devotion my bhakti very soon he'll become purified. So they were not able to understand that what is the essence of this verse. So when they were very much confused and they were bewildered, so they were thinking what to do and then uh, uh, they were told, I think, uh, so they, they were told that now if they go to this earth, then Srila Bhakti Thakur is present and he knows the real essence of this verse and because he is a pure devotee and he is eternal associate. So they all came... Yeah. So then he was sleeping one night and during his sleep they took Srila Bhakti Thakur in the heaven and he was there for about two days and very nicely he reconciled the whole verse and all the demigods were so happy to hear that and then he came back. So he preached not just in this uh, earth planet, but he preached all over the heaven. And that is also said in one of the prayers, Mahaprabhu Ragana Sabapatita Pavan, Brahmanda Tarita Shakti Dhare Jani Jani. That the associate of Mahaprabhu, all the associates are so powerful that just by their one hand they can deliver the whole world. And Srila Bhakti or Thakur was also capable. But mercifully they always keep something for other devotees to come and do some service for Mahaprabhu. So Srila Bhakti Thakur very uh, nicely did all these things and we can speak endlessly on this and I am too small and not knowing so much so we will request the Gurudev to speak on uh, his uh, wonderful life so that we can all benefit and learn. But I humbly pray at the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti Thakur that he can always bestow upon his, upon us his causeless mercy that we can understand his teachings and thus dedicate our lives with all this sincerity to follow the teachings of Mahaprabhu and please Srila Guru Maharaj so that we can perfect our lives.
Before speaking, I'd like to offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my divine Diksha Guru, Shiva Guru Govind Maharaj. Also, I'd like to offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Shiksha Guru, Shiva Bhakti Dantanoya Maharaj, and also unto the lotus feet of my Param Guru, Shiva A.C. Bhakti Dantanoya Maharaj, Shiva Prabhupada. So, devotees have been speaking very nicely and um, covering many, many topics regarding Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So, I would like to briefly just give a bit of a biographical sketch of the life of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Some years back I um, read a book which was put out by a devotee Sriman Rupa Vilas, the Seven Goswami. So what I can recall from that, then I'll speak. And if there are whatever mistakes I make, please correct me so I don't send anybody astray. So, Shilabhati no Thakwa, he appeared in a village called Uliagram um, as Kedanath Dat. It's explained that his parents, both mother and father, they came from very aristocratic stock and from a very early age he was always very interested in um, understanding the nature of the Lord, universe, spiritual subject matter and he would always inquire whether it be to, um, he, he explains that in his autobiography that there was one Chokidam, kind of a watchman who um, was a Ram Bhakta in his early days, he was a bit of a dacoit, but he was always chanting Ram. So, Srila Bhakti Kedanath would go and speak with him, hear stories of Lord Ramachandra. Even if he came in contact with Mohammedan Fakir, um, Mohammedan holy man, he would also go and he was very inquisitive to know. So, in his youth, he was well educated. His parents sent him to a school in Krishna Nagar, where they had the um, children of the influential and affluential Bengali families. And he excelled in school, but due to sickness, he had to go back to his village. And after some time, he was sent to Calcutta, where he went to college. And it's explained that at that time also he excelled, but also he he became um, open to Christian theology because it was some type of Christian school that he was studying at in Calcutta. And this inner quest to understand the absolute truth that took shape in the form of um, reading um, Christian theology. And about the same time he came in contact with um, many intellectual people in Calcutta both amongst the British Raj and also amongst the Bengali intelligentsia. Um, specifically, there's a family called the Tagore family. One of the Tagores, I think his name is Rabindranath Tagore. Tagore. He was um, a Nobel Prize winner. And one of the relatives was a Rabindranath Tagore, who was a very close friend of Bhatim No Tagore. So, um, in fact, Nota Kaur's autobiography explained that they were very, very close friends. But the Tagore family, they followed a particular philosophy called Brahmoism. Um, and they tried to convince Kedana, but Kedana said that he was not so inclined towards this Brahmoism because he, at that time, was more inclined to the teachings of Jesus Christ because they were personal in nature, whereas Brahmoism was impersonalism. It was kind of, um, from what I can recollect, some a kitri of taking the Upanishads and different parts of the Vedas, the impersonalistic aspects, and dabbing that with a bit of Christianity and 
they came up with um, Brahmanism. So, um, it was explained that during that time, the British, they, in their way to dominate India, their policy was that um, whatever aspects of Indian culture, specifically um, the scriptures, um, religious rituals, that they would condemn and, and just put down as being pretty much hodgepodge. So, and also the young um, intellectual <coughs> Indians that would come up in the system, they would train them to be English in mentality, even though physically they were Indian. So under such situation, then the, especially the Bengali um, intellectuals, they took to this Brahmanism, and it became very, very prevalent. But um, during this time, Kedanath, that he was, he was not really um, so much attracted to this. So, it's explained that he had to leave Calcutta because um, I think there was some sickness in the family or some kind of um, devastation in his village. And he had to um, take up, um, taking care of his family, his mother. By this time he was a married man. So he had different jobs and it explains how he had so many different jobs um, throughout his life. And at one point he came in contact with um, Vaishnav Sadhus and he got the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So he explains that reading Chaitanya Charitamrita then immediately he could appreciate the sublime teachings and pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And at one point he said that in reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Ba very quickly arose in him. So, after coming in contact with Vaishnav scriptures, he would um, he would always search out um, sadhus, and he became more and more absorbed in the Vaishnav teachings. So we can see that though Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's an eternal associate of the Lord. But the Lord, He used him in a particular way that, as has been mentioned earlier, that it is through Him that the worldwide preaching um, has come about. So, He being the first Acharya in this way, He was educated in the Western system, and He had a very broad um, way of dealing with different religions. He was his approach was um, very non-sectarian and this was so much appreciated by people of, the, um, of his time that when there were disputes between the caste Hindus and those following Brahmanism or what have you then they would call up upon Kedanath Dat to try and resolve the situation because everybody appreciated that he was a very learned, open and broad-minded person. Um, this would sometimes backfire in the sense that in presenting the Vaishnav conclusion, then sometimes both parties would get annoyed with him because he would not side with either but present the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, as has been explained also, um, after some time he resided in Jagannapuri and he held the post of um, what, deputy, Magistrate. deputy Magistrate, which was the um, highest post that could be held by an indigenous um, citizen of the time and he would um, take care of, um, he would oversee the worship of Lord Jagannath in the temple and he explains that he experienced great bliss going daily to the temple of Lord Jagannath taking darshan and also he would have um, Bhagavad discourses, Bhagavad Pravachan um, in a particular part of the um, Jagannath temple. So, one pastime that comes to mind is um, having these discourses, there was, he would have the different Vaishnavas would come and they would sit down and discuss and in another part um, there would be um, people discussing um, philosophy from an impersonal point of view. So, 
I think it was in the Valba Gardens that the discussions would go on. And one elderly Vaishnava, a Babaji, he was not so much in favor of the devotees going to sit and speak with um, Kedanath Dan, because he's saying that he was not wearing um, neck beads, um, and he was not externally showing the symptoms of a Vaishnava. And he kind of started a bit of a, a boycott of um, the Katan. But I can't remember exactly, but one night in a dream, um, he, the person, this devotee, he was actually a very exalted person. He became sick, and in a dream, um, he was chastised for his treating Kedna that like this. So when he got up in the morning, immediately he ran over to where Bhaktino Thakur was staying and paid, he begged forgiveness. And Bhaktino Thakur, he replied that, um, please forgive me, what is my fault for not wearing Kantimala? That Lord Mahaprabhu has not sent my guru to me yet. So because of this, I'm not wearing because the tradition, um, from what I can understand, is that uh, that the guru will get the neck beads. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that that this um, elderly Babaji then became very affectionate to Bhaktivinoda Thakur and would give him shelter. So in Jagannath Puri, he would associate with um, so many devotees. Um, then after that, he was posted to different places, but as been explained, he also um, was posted near Navadweep, and I believe um, to the close to the end of his um, manifest pastimes, then he stayed in a um, a place which is in Jagannath Puri, um, near the Haridas Thakur Samadhi, where he wound up his lila. So I cannot remember much more. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. reduce 
the teachings of Mahaprabhu simply to uh, uh, rules and regulations without the Vaidhi Mark. So, <clears throat> both of these tendencies uh, will not allow us to actually capture the true essence of what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. And we find both in the personality of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, in his behavior, in his, uh, the example that he set, and especially in his uh, voluminous writings, that he established the true conclusions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to dispel and eradicate both of these tendencies. Uh, if we simply examine the number of books written by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, it is astonishing. He wrote over 100 books, and he wrote in six different languages. He wrote in Sanskrit, Bengali, Hindi, English, Urdu, and Oriya. So this is a, an extraordinary feat. And in, in some years, he wrote as many as six different books some of them very large books. Uh, so it is quite extraordinary. And in those books, he presented many uh, revolutionary concepts. Uh, he took the essence of the teachings of the six Goswamis and he presented them in a very extraordinary <coughs> manner. Uh, some of these things have already been described. Uh, Shila, uh, Naveen Prabhu gave a very nice uh, description of Jaya Dharma. <coughs> so, uh, and also of uh, Das Mulam, which is one of the most prominent concepts that we find throughout the uh, books of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. There is one book, <coughs> Bhagavad Arka Marichi Mala, in which he the whole book is discussing this concept of Das Mula very elaborately. I won't uh, describe it again because it's already been nicely described. Um, I just wanted to add one thing, that this Das Mula, it is also further divided into the topics of Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayojan. So, of the nine pramayas, or the nine uh, fundamental principles which are established by the praman, or by the shastra, the first seven fall under the category of sambandha tattva, understanding one's relationship with the Lord. Uh, so, understanding different aspects of the Lord, His energies, and the living entities, and interrelationship between all of these all come under the category of Sambandha Gyan. So seven of these nine Pramayas fall under that. Then the next one is Abhideya Tattva. So Abhideya Tattva refers to that process by which we can attain the goal of life. So this refers to the path of Bhakti. And it refers specifically to bhakti beginning from, uh, or in the stage of sadhana, beginning from shraddha up to the stage of asakti. And <clears throat> prayojan tattva, which is the ninth principle, refers to sadhya, the the goal or the the goal to be obtained by bhakti. So this is including both. Bhav and Prem. So, in this book, he has described all these things, and I think it's at the very end of the book, he says that uh, I, I, I must explain how the vision of this book came to me. He said, in one sense, I feel ashamed to admit it, because uh, if I admit it, then some persons will think that I am proud. And yet, on the other hand, if I don't admit it, 
then I will not be giving credit to the uh, person from whom this revelation came. So he says that uh, the, the revelation of this book came to him in a dream from Surah Damanar Goswami. And he revealed to him how to summarize the entire Shrimad Bhagavatam. This Bhagavad Argamarichimala consists of approximately 300 shlokas. <coughs> so they're all from Shrimad Bhagavatam. So he uh, explained to him, explained to Bhaktivinoda Thakur how to summarize the entire Bhagavatam into these 300 shlokas and according to the divisions of Sambandha, Abhideya, and Parayojan, and then also according to the explanation of Nasmula. So, uh, by this and so many incidents of the life of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, we get some insight into what kind of a person he was. He was not an ordinary person at all. He was an eternal associate of the Lord. Also in Bhavataranga, in the final portion of the book, he explains his eternal swarup as Kamala Manjri. And he gives a very elaborate description there of uh, his form and the services that he performs there. So, uh, by doing this, he has both indicated his, uh, what his actual position is, and he is also teaching us what is the, uh, what is the process for us to advance. So, in all the books that he has written, he has given a very systematic pres uh, presentation of the philosophy of Lord Chaitanya, beginning from basic concepts, like the Bhim Prabhu was describing in the, in the beginning of Jaiva Dharma. He was explaining what is the actual Swarup of the Jeev, and uh, how the Jeev should be uh, first established. He is also discussed in many of his books, uh, Varnashram Dharma, uh, as a platform to uh, enter into bhakti. And then he describes bhakti beginning from Shraddha and described elaborately what is Vaidhi Bhakti, what is Raghunuga Bhakti. And especially in uh, Jaiva Dharma, he has explained all the teachings or the essence of all the teachings of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Ujjwal Nilmani. From chapters approximately chapter 19 onwards, the last 20 or so chapters of the book. Uh, he has given all the essential teachings of these two books of Srila Rupa Goswami uh, through the form of uh, this uh, wonderful story. And as Srila Gurudev has explained many times, it's not, we shouldn't take it as just some novel. It is uh, such an extraordinary book. It is uh, the only book that we can compare it with is Riyad Bhagavat Amrit in its style. <coughs> because it is uh, telling a story, but again, not as an ordinary novel, but as uh, a series of exchanges between different Vaishnavas and teaching all the Siddhanta through the exchanges that take place uh, through those Vaishnavas. Uh, so, in this way, he has established all the conclusions of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has eradicated the various uh, Sahajya groups, and also, but at the same time, established very strongly what is our actual process. Uh, nowadays, we find that some persons, they say that we should not even mention the word Raghunuga. And we should not uh, discuss about what is Bhava Bhakti, what is Prema Bhakti, and what is uh, the mood of the residents of Braj. We should not discuss Tenth Canto Srimad Bhagavatam. 
so these some of these ideas are being presented nowadays. But I think that persons that are presenting such ideas, that they must have never read any of the books of Srila Bhakti Nava Thakur. Because if anyone studies any one of his books, then they have to see that all of these conclusions are in his books, beginning from the basic level up to the topmost level. So he has uh, actually taught through the method how he has presented his books, how we are meant to follow. Uh, first by understanding all of the siddhanta regarding sambandha jnana, then how to practice bhakti, what is the eligibility for vaidhi bhakti, what is the eligibility for raganuga bhakti, how to practice these things. And in uh, so many of his books, such as uh, Bhajan Rahasya, and in many of his song books also, he has taught in a very uh, practical and concrete way how to practice Bhajan in order that we can obtain uh, this goal which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. So we are greatly indebted uh, to Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur for giving us all these books, for uh, planting the seed uh, by which the mission of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could be spread throughout the world uh, if it was not for uh, His mercy we would not be all gathered here right now uh, glorifying Him and receiving tremendous uh, inspiration from his very dear follower, uh, our Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta uh, Narayan Maharaj. So, uh, I will stop here. Uh,